Listen, we all love the standard house cat, but sometimes you want to see a cat with upgraded features. We sent Nabil to find out more. No water, no food, no shelter. I think this might be the end for me. And I've been here like about 45 seconds. Man, how do animals survive in such extreme conditions? To find out more, I'm about to meet with Heather Down, animal care curator at the Living Desert Zoo and Gardens. I grew up in the desert out here in Southern California, and my fifth grade teacher themed our curriculum to be marine science based. And from there, my love and passion for the natural world and for animals just took off. But then I realized that the desert ecosystem needs help and needs attention, and needs focus. It's a world that we know little about. And so then I started to cater my career to understanding the deserts a little bit more. Now Heather is part of a team taking care of 600 desert dwelling animals from all over the world, including one of the fiercest predators on planet Earth, the black-footed cat. No, really, she is. Today we're gonna meet and hang out with Aria. Hi, Aria. So she is smaller than I was expecting. Yeah, so black-footed cats are actually one of the smaller small cat species. How can these cats survive in such extreme conditions? So when you think of deserts, you think of desolation and harsh environments, but there's actually an array of unique species that call deserts home and they're adapted to extreme environments. So black-footed cats don't really have to drink water very often. So they're mm. gonna get their hydration from the prey that they are eating, which is pretty cool. Wow. Black-footed cats are just one of 33 small cat species who make their home in the desert, which means these tiny predators can make a big impact on their ecosystems all around the world. So what do they hunt? Black-footed cats are gonna go for your small birds, they're gonna go for small rodents and mammals, lizards, as well as the occasional snake. Wow. They are an incredibly fierce hunter and very successful in their foraging strategies. Out of every 10 attempts, six of those are gonna elicit a reward. Wow. Yeah. That is a very high success rate. Yes. She has a good relationship with humans. Yes. What got us to that point? So from a young age, we start to interact with our animals so we can start to train them for participation in their own health care. So she's trained for voluntary weight. So we can weigh her weekly. We can train her to go into a crate so if we need to take her in for an exam. Heather hopes to keep Aria in tip-top form because as a species, black-footed cats are vulnerable to extinction. It's estimated there are less than 10,000 left in the wild, which makes a conservation program like this critically important. So the goal of this facility is to make more of these cats, to put a plane with. Yeah, there's only about 23 black-footed cats in our American zoos. And so she has a really important responsibility to not just you know be happy, but also to go on and help breed so we can have that population sustainability. So are there other types of cats in this facility? There are. You want to go meet a sand cat? Yeah. All right, let's go. While black-footed cats are native to Africa, sand cats can be found in the wilds of both Africa and Asia. I'd like to introduce you to Napoleon. Hi, Napoleon. So he's a sand cat and he's about 10 years old and has had four kitten offspring. Uh -huh. Yeah, so this species is found in the Saharan Desert and they're actually camouflaged. So if you check out his coat, you can see that he's gonna be the color of sand. He actually has really furry uh, bottom feet and that's gonna serve as insulation when he's out walking around on the hot desert sand. I'm noticing a wider head here, some floppy ears. Uh, do those come in handy out in the desert? They actually have an extremely large ear canal. This allows them to hear scratching of mice and rodents in the burrows, and you can seek out and hunt that prey. So what's their diet? So they're gonna eat your small lizards, your small rodents, mice, small rabbits. They're successful hunters of a venomous sand viper. This guy can take it down a sand viper? Yeah. No way. That's pretty cool. Very cool. It's clear that this guy has a pretty good here, but what are some threats to the safety and security of sand cats in their natural habitats? Unfortunately, it's humans, but we can also be the solution. Sand cats are losing habitat, which is detrimental for a species that likes to roam areas up to 120 square miles. By protecting their valuable desert ecosystems, we can make a positive impact, not just for sand cats, but for many types of small desert cats all around the world. 
Heather, thank you so much for teaching me about small cats and all they do to survive in the desert. I'm actually gonna take some of their advice when I go on my own desert trek. Where are you going? Oh, just to the parking lot. It's so hot out, it's like 120 degrees. Do you have any snacks, by the way? Not on me. Oh, okay. You know what? I'll just scavenge. I'll go sand cat mode. Good luck. Bye, Nabil. Bye, Heather. If you're watching this, you must have really liked the video. Make sure you follow and subscribe and check out these other videos that are even better. No, really. I've seen this one over a hundred times.